Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Agent's Edge. My name is Ryan Palomini. Today we're gonna to talk about how to utilize the three bucket strategy in your sales process. Now I've gotta tell you, this process really changed the way we do things at our firm because it's a very simple, easy way of presenting to your clients a strategy that really makes sense. And it's a visually, when you break it down the right way, it makes everything so much easier. So let's talk about what it is. When you're presenting to a client, whether it's annuities, AUM, IULs, whatever that you're presenting, I want you to think about coming up with a strategy. Remember, the products that we sell, IULs, annuities, whatever, that is not the strategy. It has to be part of the strategy. And that's where a lot of people go wrong. I did an entire video on the difference because that is not how you build a strategy by just saying, hey, I got this annuity, it's got a 10% bonus, you should buy it. Okay, great, but why? What does it do for me? How does it fit my overall strategy, right? What does it holistically do for me? And that's why people struggle in the annuity space because they sell the product as a strategy, not an incorporated strategy. So when you're starting to talk about strategies, the three bucket strategy plays a huge role in how that revolutionizes and makes it easier. Let me explain. The first bucket should be all about income. Now that could be their fixed incomes that they currently have. That could be social security, it could be a pension. And really what we're trying to do in that first bucket is find the gaps in income. Because, here's an example. Let's say Ryan, uh, my client says, Ryan, I need $5,000 a month in income to cover my expenses. Okay, great. Now that we know that, let's first and foremost figure out where that money's coming from. Maybe they have $2,500 in Social Security. Great, we have half of that $5,000 covered. Maybe they have a pension that's $1,000 a month, right? Now we're at $3,500. We still have $1,500 to go. Where is that $1,500 coming from? You see, that is where we start incorporating parts of the strategy. Because the first strategy, again, is income. I'll go through the buckets real quick. I'll go back. We got income. We have our short-term growth, maybe the, li the liquid part of our portfolio, the conservative part, maybe even the Roth conversion part, and I'll explain that in a second. Then the third bucket is that long-term growth strategy, right? But we got to focus on that first strategy, which is income. So let's say that the client has $500,000 in their portfolio. Well, in this first bucket, since we know that we have a $1,500 a month income gap, the first thing that we have to do is figure out out of that 500,000, how much do we need to earmark specifically for the purpose of filling that income gap? Now, let's make up a number. Let's say that's 200,000. So we know that this 200,000 is all we need to put into maybe an income annuity that's gonna go into the annuity and cover that $1,500 a month. Great, now that we've got our First bucket completely covered, the income bucket, which to me is the most important bucket because the long-term growth, the Roth conversions, none of that, it, does, it means nothing. If we don't have the foundation built first, the foundation is income. If you don't have that built, how do you build the rest of the strategy around it? It doesn't make any sense. You could build a long-term growth strategy, but they still could run out of money. So we need to focus on the income first. Now, once that is accomplished, then we move on to the second bucket, and that could be the conversation around whether you're doing rough conversions, again, short-term growth, conservative. So you need to figure out how to, what I call, earmark pieces of money of people's portfolios to perform certain ways. And so a lot of people, if you think about that, if you ask somebody, explain to me how your portfolio is earmarked to perform certain ways for you. They're gonna start talking about how great of a diversification they have in their portfolio, right? I've got some here in stocks, some here in bonds. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about you, how your portfolio is diversified. I'm talking about how you have every single penny of your 500,000 accounted for to perform a certain way, to do something within this overall strategy. So let's say that we use 200,000 to cover income. We have 300,000 left. So now we've got to figure out, out of that 300 grand, if it was to completely go away, how much of that 300 grand could we afford to lose and still live a comfortable retirement? You know, that may be $100,000. They may say, if 100 grand went away, man, would it hurt, but, my income is still good, still have 200,000, great. 
that's how we figure out how much we're going to put into the long-term growth. Now, there's a lot more that goes into that. I'm kind of giving you a 30,000-foot overview. Obviously, we've got to know what the real strategy is and tax planning and whatnot, but I'm just kind of getting you to think about this three-bucket strategy and how it could be implemented. So we've got this $100,000 that's going to go into a long-term growth strategy. Maybe that's a long-term growth annuity if they don't need to access the money. Maybe it's a, an aggressive portfolio if you're securities licensed. But now we've got this middle bucket. And this middle bucket is a really important bucket. It's, it's $200,000 that we know we can't afford to lose. We don't necessarily need for income right now, and we're not going to take any risk on. So that could be a you know a very conservative type of maybe dividend type producing portfolio. Uh, it could be a MIGA where you're kind of putting it in, multi-year guarantee annuity to let it get some good, you know, growth without any risk. Um, there's a lot of things you could do here with that. Maybe you converting some of that to an IUL. So all these different strategies could be implemented. But if you're doing Roth conversions, this is the bucket that I like to focus the Roth conversion money in because we don't want to take a whole lot of risk with the money that we're going to do conversions on. Because if we're taking risk and the market is going sky high, right? It's really redundant work. You're growing like crazy while trying to con convert money. It's not a very good way of doing things because it's a lot of work. So we like to try to be a little bit more conservative with that money, putting it into a conservative type portfolio and using that money for Roth conversions. And we're converting that to the third bucket, which is that long-term growth. Because why? Well, we want to be really aggressive with the Roth conversion bucket that we've moved that Roth money into for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, we want it to grow and get as big as possible because that money is now tax-free when they take it. Another reason we want to is because we need to make up for in the taxes that we lost on the conversion process. So again, I really just want to get your head wrapped around the three bucket strategy, how to start having that conversation with your client and why it's important to add to your toolbox when you are showing people how to build an overall strategy. I hope it's been helpful. Again, I wish I could spend more and more time diving into these things, but I know that I want to give you guys some bite-sized information to be able to take and go back and implement and implement the stuff immediately. Thanks so much again for watching. If you have not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button for me. Like this, share it. See you on the next